Dr. Maxson, you mentioned this uh, briefly in some remarks, but uh, we're talking about nanoscience, and uh, I was able to tour the Institute for Nanoscience and Engineering Technology at my alma mater, the University of Arkansas. It was very exciting to me, the possibilities there, so I was wondering if, if the panel could address the opportunities in nanoscience as it relates to biotechnology, and is this an area that needs more uh, research funding? I'll, I'm not an expert in nanotechnology, but I'll kick this off and then uh, allow my, my colleagues to respond. I know that nanotechnology intersects with uh, biotechnology in some of the high-level treatments that are being done now to target certain therapeutics to certain parts of the body, very specific parts of the body. I know that nanotechnology is used in the process of doing some uh, diagnostic kinds of analyses, again, in the biomedical space. I don't, like I said, I'm not an expert. I don't know much about how nanotechnology intersects with the non-biomedical fields. It would be interesting to hear from my colleagues whether there are any. Uh, there was, um, in fact, a small NSF um, industry and university consortium that was um, uh, established at the University of Illinois to try to bring together, uh, it was uh, established at a former nanotechnology center, well it still is a nanotechnology center, um, but they brought in industry that was involved in agriculture, some other uh, industry that was involved in uh, food and diagnostics and medicine to try to come in and bring products to market rapidly that could uh, be based on, on nanotechnology. I think if you just step way back, I'm not a physicist, but the thing that nanotechnology did to material sciences is help uh, re-envision what was possible. We thought we knew what was possible with our uh, uh, understanding of the physics and of the performance of materials at a certain scale. Nanotechnology changed that and remarkable products uh, and concepts came out of that. I think engineering biology is doing the same thing to biology. We had a framework was, of what was possible that was rocked with the development of recombinant DNA technology in the, uh, in the early 80s. Insulin came very quickly after that, a Nobel Prize. Um, now we have high school students that could do the same level of, of engineering that uh, formed early products. Um, and so this is re-engineering, uh, re-imagining re what is even possible using biology for what it's very good at, making things, making nanostructured things. Biology makes wonderfully complicated nanostructured materials in things besides carbon. And so how does it do that? And how could uh, technology be brought to bear to do that? And I, so I think it's questions like that, um, that a good, uh, well thought out national plan for bringing students and bringing the, the, the technology to bear could follow on that metaphor of, of nanotechnology. And it had to bring in uh, associated concepts of regulatory and safety all at the same time. Dr. Maxson. To follow on the point that Dr. Evans just made, uh, the National Nanotechnology Initiative is a great example of a coordinated effort that gave rise to opportunity, coordinated federal research, coordinated uh, <clears throat> uh, interest in uh, public science, understand, the public understanding of the science, I think that at that that model exists that could be applied here. Anybody else like to address the nanoscience question? Only very briefly that biology is already the supreme source of nano exquisite molecular structures. Uh, biology and the enzymes that it employs to do chemistries are uh, there for us to make use of as we attempt to expand the chemical palette of building blocks that we can use to make new materials. So there is a definite overlap uh, in some of the applications. And Dr. Zerber, just as a, a quick last question, your work in biofuels, can you describe some of the barriers that exist for bringing biofuels to market, I know there's been a lot of attempts, really not any successful attempts. Uh, yes, quickly, so I'm currently no longer working on biofuels, but I did spend about seven years pursuing biofuels, and 
the challenges that that sector faces are driven by the macroeconomic forces having to do with the price of oil and the price of feedstocks for the fermentation products. Uh, it's worth highlighting that in the course of pursuing biofuels, both with private and federal funding, all the tools that we are, this panel is making use of to drive other applications and other uh, of the technology, a lot of that began with biofuels. Uh, the biofuels have not yet reached the economic tipping point to be competitive, but uh, things only need to change a little bit for that to, to turn around, and we'll be ready when they do. Okay. I'd like to thank the witnesses for their valuable testimony and the members for their questions. The record will remain open for two weeks for additional comments and written questions from members. The witnesses are excused, and this meeting is adjourned.